Our guest, Matthew Aide, is a historian of the American intelligence world who wrote a highly regarded history of the National Security Agency called Secret Sentries. Matthew Aide's new book is called Intel Wars, The Secret History of the Fight Against Terror. Take you back just a little bit. The reason I became interested in this subject is it sort of fell into my lap. I started noticing that there were these uh, frequent flights of helicopters over my very quiet uh, residential neighborhood in Northwest Washington, D.C. And as time, this is all post 9-11. Let's, let's say also that, that there's a purpose behind this that has to do with the uh, NDA. The, the uh, main purpose for this interview was the enactment of the National Defense Authorization Act. The end of the erosion of our constitutional rights and it pretty clearly spells out in a lot of paperwork that uh, America has been declared a war zone and American citizens are subject to arrest and detainment outside of the constitutional protections. As time went by, the number of flights increased and they became very irritating, especially when, uh, I'll give you one example, I came out of the George Washington University Library and there's almost always a helicopter conducting some form of surveillance, low altitude surveillance in the neighborhood. Okay, uh, and so far have we violated any kind of a security oath? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> no, but we're, I'm just going to ask you that periodically just so, so that we can sort of monitor that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, um, are you able to describe what kind of clearance you had? Um, the level of clearance that I had uh, or the designation for my top level, uh, top secret level clearance would be Indigo. And Indigo was a level of clearance that anybody that worked with Tomahawk missiles got uh, that was related to SEAL Team 9. Okay, uh, so we're having a helicopter fly over quite low at this moment. Um, not sure why, uh, but it's an interesting dynamic. Um, so we're just going to wait just a brief minute here and see if we can hear it disappear. And uh, the helicopter came down and started hovering over my position. And being somewhat irritated at the time, I raised my right hand and gave the helicopter the finger, uh, which uh, the helicopter then proceeded to follow me <laughs> <laughs> for the next 10 minutes as I walked to a metro station. Okay, we're having more helicopter flyovers here. I'm not sure what. We're in a, actually a shopping center in Malibu. Malibu. I'm not sure why we would be having some over flyovers here. Popular. I mean, there's plenty of, of helicopter activity in the Malibu area, but it's usually along the coast, just FYI. Okay, so moving okay. right along, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the capability of the missile itself. Um, uh, but what I started doing is taking down the tail numbers of these helicopters, and I plugged the tail numbers of these helicopters into the computer database of the Federal Ad Aviation Administration and the computers identified five front companies that had been formed by the FBI in the late 1990s during the, the sort of the tail end of the Clinton administration to operate upwards of 130 fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters but which uh, they're based everywhere in the United States. It's not just the Washington, D.C. area. If you live in New York City, there's a, there's a naval air station in New Jersey where the FBI keeps a small fleet of aircraft uh, that are in the air over New York City at any one time. San Francisco, Los Angeles, Miami, Chicago, FBI aircraft are operating all over all the major urban areas in the United States. Um, at that point, uh, we could uh, interrupt the flight path of the missile by sinking to it with a special piece of equipment. Okay, I'm sorry, we have a, a helicopter again flying very low over this building. Um. <laughs> I mean, 
if this continues, we'll probably have to move on to some other location. That's fine. Um, I can't for the life of me imagine why it keeps going over and over. No. Okay. Okay. Um, Just back up a tiny bit. Okay. Um, I assumed you asked the FBI about these aircraft. Did you have any qualms about revealing this in the location of their hangars and that kind of information? Well, I have, uh, first of all, I'm not a reporter, so I have no First Amendment protections. And so I have to be very, very careful. I have to self-censor because, you know, it, and obviously it goes without saying that the worst thing that could possibly happen to me is to get a knock on the door and a pair of FBI agents are standing there in the doorway. So I tried to be very careful. I kept a lot of material out of the book. Is this the sound of a helicopter still? Mm-hmm. Interesting. It's like hovering. Yes. Just right there. Okay. Um, do you feel threatened at all by that? Um, no, but it only has to do with what I've been through and not that I don't think your concerns are unreasonable. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess we're going to wait and see what what happens here. We, we may actually have to move on. Um, so it was okay to, to, to describe where these FBI aircraft are? Did you talk to them about it? No, actually, uh, I talked to some people in the intelligence community about the whole issue, and they said, look, if you can find this uh, this hangar, and by the way, it, it's if you know where to look, the information is available on Google. It's uh, You just have to know where to look. I, I mean, I'm not claiming that you know this was any massive discovery on my part. It's just you know, all the various bits of data were out there. You just had to know where to find it. And I'm sure the FBI uh, will not be happy with me about this, but I didn't disclose a lot of information about the activities of these aircraft or the identities of the companies involved. That may have gone across you know, the line, and I just didn't want to go there. Okay. So... I just want to make sure that we cover this sort of preliminary until you go to the blow by blow of what went on. And we are still having uh, helicopters in the vicinity, in the background. What do you think? Should, should, we, uh, should we change and go to my I think if we ever want to get it done, we should change. <laughs> okay. This is not going away. All right, yeah. And I was thinking about that long before you were.